Hello everyone, I'm Nick Rigetti. Today I'm going to read Gilgamesh the King, retold and illustrated by Lumila Zeman. Long ago, in the land of Mesopotamia, a king by the name of Gilgamesh was sent by the sun god to rule over the city of Erech. Gilgamesh was part god and part man. He looked human, but he did not know what it was to be human. He had power and wealth, but he was not happy. He had everything except friends. He was always alone. Because of this, he grew bitter and cruel. One day, he decided to show how strong and powerful he was and make the people remember him forever. So it was that Gilgamesh ordered a great wall to be built around the city. He ordered the men to leave their jobs and families to work on it. He made the women bring food. Children were kept away so no one would stop to play with them. At first, the people helped willingly. Their king must have good reason for wanting the wall. Was an enemy planning to attack the city? But as the wall got higher and higher, the people grew restless. How high did it have to be? He went up higher than any wall in the world. Gilgamesh pushed one day and night. Men fainted from work and hunger. Food grew scarce. The people cried out for mercy, begging Gilgamesh to stop, but he would not listen. In despair, they prayed to the sun god for help. The sun god heard their prayers and ordered their creation of another man as strong as Gilgamesh. His name was Enkidu. He was made from the clay of the earth. Since Gilgamesh had learned nothing from living with people, Enkidu was sent to live with the animals of the forest. As he got to know the animals, he learned to care for them. But he did not know human kindness, for he had never seen another person. The first and Enkidu saw he didn't like. It was a hunter chasing animals through the forest, tried to kill them. Why would anyone want to do that? Enkidu wondered. He rushed to help his friends. He threw the hunter from his chariot and rescued the wounded animals. The hunter ran back to Uruk to warn Gilgamesh about the new danger in the forest. He called Enkidu the strongest man in the world. Gilgamesh was furious. There's no one as strong as I am, he said. Bring this creature to me so I can prove it. I will destroy him in front of all the people of Uruk. The hunter said he could not capture so strong a wild man by himself. Then, said Gilgamesh, we will trick him into coming. Take the singer Shemet. Let her lure him, her, with her songs and charms. It was said that the only person in Uruk who did not love Shamat was Gilgamesh, and that was because he loved no one. She was the most beautiful woman in the city, and the finest singer in the temple. But could she tame the wild man? The hunter did not want to return to the forest to be made a fool of game, but he dared not argue with Gilgamesh or disobey him. The hunter led Shama to the place in the forest where he had last seen Enkidu. He left her alone and fled back to the city. As night fell, Shama played her harp and sang in the darkness. Her voice cast a spell over the forest. Enkidu walked toward the sound, then stopped behind a tree. He had never seen anything so lovely. He approached her slowly so as not to frighten her. Shama saw Enkidu and stopped singing. He looked more like a beast than a man, but she knew he would not harm her. No one have ever looked at her with such much tenderness. In the days that followed, Shama taught him to speak and to sing, and she fell in love with him. They explored the ways of love together, and Enkidu promised he would stay with her always. Shama was frightening. Enkidu must not go near the city of Uruk where Gilgamesh was wanting to destroy him. But 
Enkidu refused to listen. He was not afraid. He would go fight to death for her. The saddest moment for Enkidu was leaving his animal's friends. They gathered to watch him go. They could not understand why he was abandoning them, and he could not explain. Each day, from morning until dusk, Gilgamesh watched from his tower on top of the Great Wall of Uruk, want for Shamat to return. Everyone in the city had heard of the wild man who might come from the forest and save them from their cruel king. Gilgamesh knew what they were thinking. He would kill this stranger in front of all the people of Uruk, so no one would think of challenging his rule. Shaman was worried. Could Enkidu defeat Gilgamesh? What would people think of this wild creature? To make him look more like another man, she cut his hair and tore part of her robe to cover him. But Enkidu kept his horn crown in memory of his animal friends. Shama pointed to Uruk in the distance. Enkidu was dazzled. He had no imagined how beautiful a city could be. The next morning, the people gathered to watch as Shama and Enkidu could approach the gate. Gilgamesh had ordered work on the wall, stopped for the day, so all could see his victory. He stood on top of the wall and shouted at Enkidu, I am master of this city and its people. No one enters without my permission. I dare you to come up here and fight me. Enkidu climbed the wall. I'm ready, he shouted back. It was the most frightening battle the people of Uruk had ever seen. They fought for hours. The earth shook and lightning flashed across the sky as if the gods themselves were threatened to control the world. Gilgamesh and Enkidu were equal in strength and neither was weak. Then suddenly Gilgamesh stepped on a loose stone, stumbled, and fell over the edge of the wall. It happened so quickly that people watching could not believe their eyes. To their amazement, Enkidu reached over the wall, grabbed Gilgamesh by the arm, and raised him to safety. Why? Enkidu had won. Why would he save someone who was trying to kill him? Gilgamesh again stood on top of the wall facing Enkidu. All who watched held their breath. Gilgamesh took a step towards Enkidu, stopped, opened his arms and embraced him. The king finally understood what it was to be human. He was no longer alone. He had found a friend. The celebrations went on for days. Shaman was chosen to lead the biggest parade that had ever taken place in Ur. Gilgamesh and Enkidu, now brothers, watched and waved from atop the Great Wall. Gilgamesh ordered work on the wall stopped forever. Fathers and mothers were reunited and danced with their children in the streets. Gilgamesh invited everyone to a great feast. A new place settled over Uruk. On quiet evenings, Shamat liked to go out on the river with Enkidu and listen while he and Gilgamesh plan how they might make the city a happier place. Then she would play her harp and sing for them, proud that she had brought them together. As her voice floated across the water, the people of earth paused to listen, and they were grateful. Now that we have done reading the story of Gilgamesh, let's ask ourselves a few questions. What caused Gilgamesh's feelings toward people to change? How can we change someone's opinion of us? Can we? How can we display tenderness? Think of Enkidu and Shamat. Why do you think Enkidu was sent to live with the animals? And the very last question, in what ways do we build emotional walls to keep people out? I really hope you enjoy this story and that you have taken the time to ponder on these questions. Thank you. Have a great day.